Hi, everybody. We're live from the Supercomputing SC15 conference in Austin, Texas. And we're in the Siena booth today, and I'm joined with a number of uh, friends and colleagues um, to talk about some of the technologies that are here at the High Performance uh, Computing Conference. So I'm uh, joined by uh, Dr. Case Delat from the University of Amsterdam. Happy to be here. Steve Alexander, the Senior VP and Chief Technology Officer at Siena Corporation. Morning, Rob. Akbar Kara, the CTO of the Texas Learn Network. Howdy. And Greg Bell, the Director of the Energy Science Network, ESNet. Hi, good to be here. So we're here, and of course, the big focus at supercomputing is always the uh, uh, high performance computing uh, component, but it's also an event that focuses on high performance networking. So, you know, the first uh, kind of discussion, I I'd be interested in hearing what you found uh, interesting about uh, what's happening here at uh, supercomputing. I can say some things about that. Um, I'm part of the Signet, which is uh, um, setting up the network for the show floor. There are very demanding uh, experiments and uh, showcases going on on the show floor here. Uh, it is actually the biggest supercomputing with 11,000 people attending, so it is a big show. So, um, but we are now collecting uh, about 1.6 terabit of uh, traffic capacity to uh, the booth behind us and to uh, the show floor, which is an, uh, uh, the, uh, the biggest number to date. And apart from that, we have also we are also introducing all kinds of programmability with SDN, so fine networking, open flow, and so on. So more, super, more liquid networks and yeah. flexible infrastructure. So in supercomputing, not only the computers are programmable, but now also the interconnects, the data flows, the networks. You can do a whole orchestration, and that's exciting to see that now unfolding. You can see it live and real. See what yeah. you think. So what I was really interested to see with the networks that have now been built um, and the applications that are coming, you know, online, uh, the emergence of the need for orchestration, right? The fact that you're orchestrating yeah. data sets that are in multiple locations, yeah. and you're have to be able to you know, organize that information, move um, analytic capabilities around. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the need to actually coordinate all that, which as we would call it an orchestration function, has emerged as a, a common theme. I mean, there's a lot of people who are trying out there trying to solve that problem now that you have these, you know, large data sets available. Yeah. Um, and one of the tours that we took, uh, you can see some of the work that uh, Noah was doing, weather, right, bringing in a lot of those kind of, uh, that sensor mm -hmm. information other things for cancer research and stuff. So it was it was good to see the impacts of the networks, what what's they've been able to do in terms of assembling uh, you know large large data sets and now it's a matter of you know how do you really get all the analytic capabilities orchestrated together to go really make sense of it. I, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah so I, I would say um, uh, in terms of the amount of equipment and the shrinkage of the equipment. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been with Synet for uh, almost uh, eight years now. And um, we used to have three full racks uh, and not as much bandwidth. And here we are uh, squeezing in literally half a rack, 1.6 terabits. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that so we see the, 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 the number of racks and the rack space right. required and the not right. you know, oh, fewer yeah. racks oh, yeah. and right. more, more equipment. Exactly. For, and, for and the space that the WAN used to have. We gave it up to the security folks. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Akbar's actually pretty, the uh, the team lead for the uh, for the WAN uh, component of right. the signet. So this team. year, uh, the security folks are actually capping um, 4.2 um, 420 gigabits um, and processing that wow. and, and looking for anomalies and, and gathering some data on it. So pretty so they, they they need essentially a small supercomputer on, on the rack on the on the NOC just to capture to, the to uh, capture and analyze. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, I, I had a tour of the NOC as well, as I always try to do, and I was really struck by exactly the same point. And I, I noticed that there was a rack of, you know, high density switching and optical gear and a rack of security. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's great. So one, one thing I noticed, um, and, you know, I live in the Department of Energy National Lab System, and the big idea that, that I think has been circulating throughout the DOE folks um, this week has been the idea of super facility, which is, um, to understand what that means, you have to know that Department of Energy runs very big instruments. They refer to them as facilities, accelerators, and supercomputers. And the idea um, now in circulation is that you can take a high-speed network uh, like Learn or ESNet or Internet2 and connect all those facilities together and make something that's bigger than the sum of those parts. And it requires orchestration. It requires high bandwidth. 
requires best practices in cybersecurity. But if we do it right, and we're beginning to see prototypes of this idea, um, geography sort of vanishes as a constraint yeah. in science. It just doesn't matter where TAC happens to be. It doesn't yeah. matter where NCSA happens yeah. to be or where LHC happens to be. And we can even achieve that kind of architecture across the Atlantic Ocean and across the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. You know, it used to be that you had to build the facilities by the network. Yeah, right. Today, you can pull the network to wherever the facility is. Right. And, and to, to the point you made earlier around, you know, the size of things, when um, you know, Sienna got started here, what, 20 years ago, 40 gigabits was a full rack. Yeah. yeah. And now you can hold it in your hand. That's right. right. I mean, it's yeah. a pretty dramatic improvement yeah. in density. And that was it's also cool. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's also nice to note that, indeed, uh, the security rack becomes bigger, which means that the attention that has to be paid to security is uh, ra raising. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, rising. So that's uh, very interesting. All the thing is, um, the data still gets produced at places where there are no supercomputers, and supercomputers get placed where there is no data. So yep. you need, you need to bring yeah. you need to bring together. In some cases, you can bring also the computing to the data where, for example, security demands it or functionality uh, demands it. So the capabilities of need. cloud and cloudifying the network gives great opportunities. I well, think. Was it tough to get connections to this facility to bring in all this? Capacity? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it takes about a year to build this yeah, thing. Yeah, it takes job, about a year of planning. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I mean, you, know, it, you got multiple terabits yeah, so flowing it's to this site. It's a, if, if you if you're a problem solver, this is an ideal job for you because yeah. you stumble from one problem to the other. Yeah. You anticipate some of them and you work on plan Bs. And we had multiple plan Bs that we had to execute on multiple areas to get the fiber uh, facilities that happen so that we can get, um, you know, 1.6 well, terabits. Well, once, the, once the fiber's there, you can light it up quickly. That's right. Yeah. And, and then there's the local fiber as well. We have something like 84 kilometers of fiber rolled out oh, on this just floor, 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 just yeah. under these carpets okay. to get yeah. the booths connected. That's right. And then after the show's over, all it gets rolled up. And I mean, yeah. have you seen security as a, as a big uh, factor on in the exhibits or in discussions? Oh, I certainly have. I think, I think it's probably top of mind with anybody who's um, building any anything that is public facing or yeah. that is doing yeah. anything mission critical. Security is top of mind for everybody. Well, yeah. for, for a moment, uh, Sunday we thought that we were under a massive uh, hack uh, attack, a DDoS right attack, but okay. it turned out to be a small uh, transition in a uh, router where there was a loop. But for a moment, so we, we were talking ourselves. The, the yeah, were attacking attacking our ourselves. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was our plan to stress test. Oh, yeah, the stress the commodity. Test. Yeah, that yeah. was our stress yeah. test. <laughs> but for a moment, we thought we had uh, an over terabit also take. Yeah. Well, I think okay. secure. In some ways, at this conference, it makes less and less sense to think about networking and isolation from other yeah, fields. Totally. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think the same is going to be true of security in a few years. We're going to be thinking about security from a data perspective. We're going to be applying machine learning tools. We're going to be um, we're going to be analyzing line rate network traffic using very specific tools and giving feedback to the network itself. And that, that's a different kind of orchestration. But yep. I think those are the sorts of. But so those are the emerging kinds of yeah. needs yeah. that are yeah. out there. Yeah. 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 It's interesting for a show that's on supercomputing, this probably has the most intensive networking environment yeah. 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 on the show floor of any so conference. I've had I a long it. history with, uh, with Synet and, and building the network uh, for this show. And it's amazing to see each year. The, uh, not just the bandwidth uh, increases, but the sophistication of services. And of course, what we like to look at, look at is the uh, uh, advanced technology demonstrations, the um, actual live networks that are uh, pushing the boundaries of um, telecommunications science and, and technology. And I'm wondering if you've seen any particular uh, 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 network demonstrations or applications live on the floor that have uh, Really, you really see yeah. those kind of stretch objectives for uh, for industry and for researchers. There are a number of these. So we have the uh, network research environment uh, program is inside it. I first want to stress out: it is really you cannot underestimate the amount of effort that goes into building signage. This is a network <laughs> which is in the next booth, which could easily supply internet to a small country. And it is or built a large country. It, yeah. or a large country. <laughs> it's all built for the show. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but it is uh, designed in uh, the course of one year. 
It is an uh, experiment that was in summer. It is built in four weeks and it will be taken down in two hours. Yeah. I mean, if you come here uh, Thursday evening at six, you won't recognize it anymore. It's 175. And what we years. see, <laughs> and what we see is actually that the people which we send to the NOC in China, that is an excellent training for those people, the youngsters who right. go there, they will get a uh, course in uh, advanced networking, uh, in, 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 in participating in it, which you can nowhere learn. That's right. right. Yeah, and, and the best learning right. and they get real world experience. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, there, just there this morning, they had problems. Unparalleled with yeah. Yeah. the HCP yeah. and the Beyond Band. Yeah. They of course, it's, fixed, it's so. multi-vendor. I mean, Siena has been uh, 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 providing equipment for the uh, infrastructure for uh, for many years. But the yeah. value is that it's, it's uh, multi-vendor um, uh, with uh, great diversity of, of technology. The vendors are able to, for the most part, kind of check their competitive egos at the door and come sure, in with a fair yeah. to get it to work. Internally, there's not that much that ego. They're going to get exactly. it to make that happen. Leave it so, outside. Uh, and for us, for the students, uh, I cannot stress enough uh, how important it is to train the people for the next generation uh, internet. Now, back on uh, NRE, there are quite a number of uh, very advanced demos happening on the show floor. And some are also uh, involving Signet to uh, have functionality in Signet uh, exposed. This is the first year where Signet internally for its internal boost ops used SDN to supply the links that uh, was a big feat. I mean, you always find books which you didn't know that uh, could exist. But, right, so uh, yes, I, I, would, I, would, I would add that the open flow is being used uh, for provisioning purposes this yep. year. Right. And, and then next year, and that's, a first, exactly. that's the that's first, first step. Time, and next yeah. year, yep. we want to have some interaction with the end customer. Yeah. Right? So, so we that, had that's a, very, a building block. Yeah. Yeah. We had a is very there... good dinner yesterday. So next year, uh, one of our aims might be, I am promising it now, but you know, we have to well, have it's... live from the database where you say, um, I want this connection now uh, on that boost that it then also immediately happens instead of uh, the router updates. But now it's the case. So it becomes more dynamic and becomes more uh, instantaneous, uh, sub second, if you wish. Uh, other demos are, for example, uh, there's a demo where InfiniBand, uh, 100 gig from backplane from a supercomputer to backplane of a supercomputer. Uh, from Singapore to the US is demonstrated. Uh, there is name data networking uh, demo. There were demos with network function virtualization on the show floor. Yeah. We are seriously thinking that we need that in China. The other true. thing is uh, everybody in the US is building these DMTs, the science DMT concepts pioneered by, uh, by uh, uh, ESnet. And now we get the beat in the background. Yeah, that's right. know that's it. It. <laughs> an awful lot on the go, you know. The yeah. uh, I think that there are over uh, um, two dozen of these uh, yeah. advanced technology demonstrations yeah. that uh, really, um, you know, we should we should really highlight. This. I was going to say, Rod, it might make sense just for folks. Um, just mention how well connected this is. Where else in the world does this network go to? Because it isn't just on the show yeah, floor. Well, exactly, the, yeah, exactly. It's uh, connected right. to many yeah. other locations. Uh, so our right. demo, for instance, touches CERN, yep. Amsterdam. And and these are live connections. They are indeed. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, They're not yeah. simulated. These are live no, connections over right. towards no, the big, big physics, lab. big data. And yeah. certainly it's yeah. ESnet that carries yeah. a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, traffic uh, across, yeah. the, across, across the continent. Yeah, yeah. And That's in fact, that you know, the uh, formation of this uh, panel, of course, as you, Akbar, <laughs> as the as the the stucky for yeah, the yeah. local uh, and local connectivity, local and connections you locally, have right. to make changes to your network, right? And then you you cross connect to uh, that, to Greg, right. ESnet, mm -hmm. and Internet Two, yeah. and other yeah. services. So, um, a, a part of the part of the design criteria uh, for me was the reminder that uh, you're going to have a fiber cut in the middle of the SCOA yes. while of the course. demos are going on. So. Uh, Using that experience, we uh, we took the architecture to uh, apply a ring on the learn footprint. Yeah. So between Dallas, Houston, and Austin, we have a 200 gigabit ring. We're able to pick up 200 gig 200 gigs at each one of those remote cities where we interface with ESnet and Internet2 in Dallas and Houston, and bring that back to Austin. So if we have a fiber cut. Sure. We yeah, have yeah. We, some diversity we, in, we your, have, in your yeah. architecture. Exactly. How well connected is Learn into the, the other educational institutions in Texas? How 
so, connect with this tech. So, so we have um, um, TAC as a, a big supercomputer. Then we have uh, lots of uh, LHC uh, participating yeah. universities, yeah. tier two and tier three up in Dallas area, um, and also in the Houston area. We have a huge constituency uh, in the medical area um, in, sure. in Houston. So uh, Baylor College of Medicine is one that's been pushing the, uh, the genomics envelope. Um, that was one of the demos that I found most interesting was the, the accumulation of all the genomic information out there, right. trying to really make right. sense of what all this means in terms of um, cancer treatments and such. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're used to thinking of high energy physics driving the bleeding edge of networking, right. which is done, you know, our good friend Harvey Newman, I think, nearby. Yeah, um, which and, next door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's still true. That's still very true. And in fact, that motivated our build out of a 340 gig transatlantic. Uh, network for LHC run too, but increasingly other disciplines are doing the same thing. Right. Yeah, because so. the genome seems to be two, three hundred gigabytes, yeah. right? About half a terabyte for some of them, depending upon yeah. the machine is collected on and such, and that just creates a tremendous amount of data. That's right. And you can do that over a large patient population, and right. it's distributed all over the country, all over the world. That's right. So but to really run analysis on it, you're able to collect it and analyze. Another thing I want to point out, since you mentioned the high end physics. I used to be working in high energy physics, and the big thing for me as a PhD student was beam time. You yes. were building your experiment, you had your detectors, yes. and that was beam time, and you better wear ready, otherwise you lost your chance to repair the data. I see supercomputing for my PhD students as beam time. So right. here this network is built, we have our setup, we have actually here on this booth also uh, setup with dynamic uh, uh, DDoS averting uh, programmable networks. But for the students, and there are many booths who do that. They uh, set up their experiment, they get here the maximum network they will ever get, even at their home institution, they will not get what they get here. They do their experiments, they take their measurements, and they write papers, and in the in this workshop, which I'm actually co-chairing uh, on behalf of Sinet, uh, we uh, publish these papers, if they are good enough, uh, after peer review in ACM, so that the academics also get a way to publish their work based on the beam time they get here. And this and having these yeah, deadlines so they can do is real important. research right here. That's kind of, they that's do kind that, of a good they do that actually. To, uh, yeah. But but they must be ready so they have only here the chance and that is Absolutely. very very good to hire, I think. This has kind of a good handoff to where I want to go with uh, the rest of the conversation. It sounds mm -hmm. like we're all in violent agreement that the network is extremely cool high stuff, performance right? yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. you know high appeal to uh, every geek and nerd on the planet <laughs> right so we kind of check that check that off we provided some pretty good information on, on the uh, characteristics of this network and why it's so important but where do you think the future is going to take us you know we've mentioned um uh, dynamic software control the uh, making networks uh, more liquid more able to uh, be provisioned dynamically uh less less rigidly um, that's sort of where we are today. Where do you think this is going to lead us? What what can you imagine the supercompute uh, signet network uh, or high performance network in the future is, is going to look like? Or maybe what are the challenges and what do we have to address to get there? Well, I think before we do that, I think we need to recognize that not all all networks have the same requirements, right? right. So I operate right. a network where I have lots of students behind that network and I have what we call lots of mice and uh, ants well, yep. lots of, right? lots yeah, of yeah. aggregation right. challenges eh? and then balance that against with some of the high you know, high energy physics scientists and big science uh, scientists they're generating data yeah. so my network needs to accommodate both and so what I, what I think we need in our network is more intelligence to recognize that this is not a Netflix screen this is an actual UDP screen or some Detector yeah. or some uh, some right. sensor. Yeah, right. Some right. Something right. you can delay. Right. Something right. you can buffer. Right. Something you can't. Right. And that works right. So so to, to be able to do that across the entire infrastructure, um, end to end, it's what yeah. what the challenge is. Yeah. yeah. If I if I look at it, uh, if you look at supercomputing, you see that uh, uh, most of the silicon used in the computers is actually to transport data. Only five percent of the silicon in any uh, rack of computers. It's used to do the multiplication, yeah. so it is a big networking problem. And uh, getting um, so for computing, we went from uh, assembler to uh, C to uh, object-oriented languages to MPI to cloud and to grid. And the uh, grid made it uh, worldwide. MPI was a rack. Cloud made it virtualized. 
for networking, we are just at the Fortran stage at uh, this moment. We need to make these objects, we need to build the compilers, loop unrolling, communication unrolling, making aware. So if we want to go to access scale, to true access scale, we need to get networking uh, as objects and components in compilers. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. And you know, our, our friends and colleagues who are thinking about exascale class machines, yeah. your friends attack and um, think a lot about programmability. It's not just buying a machine that can operate right. after they flops, but it needs to be just do something productive in the world and, yeah. and it's a scientist. So they think an awful lot about programming models and programmability. We haven't thought that much about that idea in the yeah. network. But you know, networks, our next generation network, ESnet 6 and certainly ESnet 7 will be a highly programmable network and it will have um, it may even be that the programming model drives the network. Right? Yeah, it is a multi-scale yeah. problem from yeah. uh, the chip level to the board level to the rack level to the uh, machine level and then to the world level. And for as and long as getting those some... objects in the compilers is a challenge. We have done some baby steps, we have publications sure. on that. The, I, I know that uh, Greg, in, in, uh, in your booth, one of the exhibits you have is starting to look at at this sort of a, a network-wide operating system. Yes, that's right. And, and uh, perhaps you tell us a little more about that. Well, I think it's ironic in some ways. We've been talking about programmable networks for years and years and years, but we still really are taking just baby steps towards um, a genuinely useful programming environment. So what we've developed, um, and I would highlight, you know, the role of Indermonga, RPO, and our, also our partners, of course, our networks and open source the company, is um, essentially a network shell. We call it net shell. Um, and, and an operating system that allows us to build modules on top that can do useful things for the world. One of the things we can do now is across the ocean generate um, dynamic multi-point VPN layer two um, VPN. Relays with cross guarantees. And so that's what essentially yeah. that's what our demo shows. And that actually is incredibly useful to us because it helps us protect the elephant flows. Yeah, we talked right. about the mice and the elephants. Yeah. We have an awful lot of elephants, right. and um, they are um, you know the mice. Um, uh, create great havoc among the elephants in, general, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in this particular universe. And so yes. um, and so that's what this demo helps us do. But it's just the very beginning, the beginning of an right, inkling right, of what right, it's really yeah, going to Because we yeah. felt for a while that you know the, the connect function, the network, the yeah. compute the store functions all should be kind of equal footing in terms of programmability. Yeah. And to a great extent they're not. Right, that's right. Right. You just can't get the network to be as real time or as dynamic as you need to be. And that's one of the reasons we're such big believers in the, the benefits of SDN and ultimately network function virtualization. That that's the way that we think that's really going to drive the networks to be much more programmable than they have been in the past. So we're absolutely on board with that. Model. And I know one of uh, Sienna's uh, strategies is to uh, open up the APIs in a number of, uh, of yeah. products and allow uh, deeper programmability uh, uh, network operating systems to actually uh, uh, go in and, and uh, uh, create new services and new right. features. Yeah, because on. For, for years, what networks were, were basically set up to be was more kind of a provision and observe model. Yeah. And, you know, if they broke, you go fix it, right? Yeah. And they well, really the need... Yeah, basically, well, the black right? box. And sometimes it, it, the true black box. Yeah, it, it needed yeah. to turn into one where it's yeah. real time control, orchestration, like that's a much more real-time dynamic model than to say a build your circuit. And the yeah, well, you know, the, there, there is another way to look at this. The programmability it really provides uh, the network operator the ability to to uh, not overspend and over-provision, right? And, and so if you're a nonprofit network, um, you have the CapEx and the OpEx side of the things, the reality. Right of, yeah. of, of yeah. operating well, to a network. Point, you don't want to be provisioning for elephant flows yeah. everywhere. What right. you got is a bunch yeah. of exactly. Around, right? So that's yeah. that's what the program, the program the programmability will help us do, uh, at least from the regional networks that that don't have unlimited resources. Um, you know, in, in, in some some high energy physics areas, they have constant funding. Um, and others and, don't. And others don't. don't. That's right. Yeah. 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 I think it's just we're talking about SciNet and the sort of the culture of it and what's distinct about it. Yeah. It's worth making the point that what's really wonderful about this community is, and it's, I don't think it's so tr much true in the commercial community, is that a lot of these um, prototypes, a lot of these experiments have to work in a multi domain case. In other words, yeah. well, Learn absolutely. and ESnet and Internet yeah. 2 and Jant um, mm -hmm. all have to work together. Right. And that's not true for services deployed in the commercial space. And that mm -hmm. makes this community very, very special. It makes right. collaboration. 
the sharing of best practice is critically important for our success. Yeah. And it's it, it's one of the things that makes the community. Yeah, but but does speak to this world that you know we're help, helping to try uh, drive to emergence, which is APIs. Mm -hmm. Common yeah. APIs across yeah. that right. you know you can program yeah. the equipment regardless those, of the vendor. Yeah, mm -hmm. but those are both dead because uh, you you know the PRP project, the safety search uh, platform, which is actually trying to combine the DMZs, the resources yeah. from the different communities, and to deliver them to different uh, domain sciences for health or life sciences, uh, physics, and so on. But you need to create a trust across those autonomous domains so that they are willing to open up their infrastructure so that it can be used uh, so it as, a a, a combined, as a combined service. Uh, Look, we yeah. just have a couple and of minutes uh, left on this. So um, I, I, that's, that's a pretty good where the where the edge is and where we can sort of go uh, with what we're doing today. Can I ask you to extrapolate a little bit further about where you think this might go in the more distant future? What are the kind of uh, uh, high performance networking challenges uh, are we going to see um, uh, maybe a little bit further further down the road? And we only have a few minutes left. So Greg, maybe I'll start with you. You know, for me, it is, it's extrapolating this idea of super facility. Instruments could be anywhere, data could be anywhere, and scientists can be anywhere. And they may not look like scientists, they may be students, they may be citizen scientists. Can we build a global machine that makes all that uh, hum beautiful? That's the big challenge. Well, to me, uh, you know, the, the devices in the hands of masses, right? They've become the number, of, more the, capable. the number of connected I mean, devices. You know, you're, you're taking a 4K video, and it's locally stored on your phone today, right? Tomorrow, those videos will be going out they on. Uh, take a 4K right? video and go send. Yeah. And the yeah. network goes yeah. fast. Right. Right. So <laughs> what happens today? Yeah. yeah. So so you know having having that end-to-end -end facility from that experience from the user, whether they are on a campus Wi-Fi network, yeah. a future Wi-Fi next generation network, or a future LTE network or a wired network, uh, that experience part of it from a student scientist. And faculty, I think that's that's where it's going to be the challenge. Yeah, and, and what I agree, a lot of it, you know, if you think about the sensor platform aspect of it, we're, we're all part of this massive sensor platform. We all yeah. walk around with smart devices that are, you know, they, they hear what you hear, they can see what you see, they can tell you your location, they can tell you, you know, local environmental conditions. Right. In the future, they're going to be monitoring, you know, health facts about you, yeah. blood pressure, and blood chemistry, these sorts of things. Building the network so it supports that environment on a global scale, that's, that's yeah. a huge challenge, but boy, what fantastic results we'll get when we can solve that. So for me, I see a few uh, different things. So one is, of course, we get huge experiments online like SCA, which uh, mm -hmm. need uh, multiple uh, NLC cables almost if you if you don't uh, care. So the whole programmability, make it in, in, in terms of computer science, a true compilers and uh, tools so that you can somehow manage it. But foremost, the most important thing we need to think about also in uh, networking is trust and privacy and integrity of the individual in a digital world. Mm -hmm. So what you say, uh, you're, so yeah. I don't, I don't need to know your blood pressure. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so making a network which can actually also observe uh, the integrity of right. an individual and the privacy, the ethics, privacy, the right. ethics of, of uh, computer science yeah, comes right. into uh, the picture. Yeah, well, yeah. so the trust, not me, <laughs> but uh, the trust is uh, the trust in the system sure. because what you see is many attacks and so on. So. Uh, people in the public see attacks, those attacks, uh, hacks, uh, information stolen. At the same time, the government and industry only wants to talk to customers via the same internet. And that, that cre creates a uh, trust going down while you only can do uh, business via the internet or your own thing or your uh, talk with the government and so on. And that is a disparity. That's, uh, that's fantastic. I think we can uh, agree that uh, this uh, supercomputing event is, in fact, a venue where high, high, uh, high performance uh, computing actually needs high performance networking, and we help explore the future. So I'd encourage everyone uh, that has a chance to uh, uh, participate to uh, come and see over 800 exhibits here that are all on the edges of science. Yeah. Best networking mm -hmm. exhibit there is. Right? And, and, and it's all and here it on the show floor and connected to the rest of the world. Uh, and in many respects, a, uh, a live laboratory to uh, explore the very things that we've been talking about this morning. Yeah. Thanks for organizing this. Yeah, thanks, well, thanks very much for your time, yeah. gentlemen.
So this is Rodney Wilson, uh, Senior Director of External Research at Siena, signing off and thanking you for your attention. So okay. Have a great Thank day, you. guys. Bye.